Hi, my name is Alan Gerganis. I am the K-8 Teaching Farm Manager with Jones Valley Teaching Farm. My name is Sarah Bell. I'm the Downtown Assistant Farm Manager. We are currently at the Teaching Farm at Avondale Elementary School. Uh, this is one of seven locations. We are in five K-8 schools as well as Woodlawn High School and we have a downtown production farm. We utilize these teaching farm spaces to teach standard space lessons to pre-K through graduating seniors. At each of our sites uh, we have a full-time instructor that works within the schools to teach the lessons. On our K-8 sites we have myself along with graduate apprentices managing the sites, making sure the produce is grown and the site is beautiful and maintained. And then at our Woodlawn High School location, we have an instructor, a farm manager, an assistant farm manager, and a small team of about a half a dozen high school apprentices. And then downtown, we have Sarah Bell and Jessica. To be outside and do hard work every day, especially at Jones Valley, get to share that knowledge with people who are interested and share those passions with like-minded folks. It is an intersecting point of a lot of different passions and interests of mine. It overlaps into activism, physical activity, the environment, technical labor skills, um, organization and planning, working with other people. Um, it's a very satisfying, like deeply satisfying occupation for me. I farm mainly because it's, it's just been a natural path for me. Uh, my background is mostly environmental activism and environmental education. Um, and being at a teaching farm uh, is a natural fit for that because we're outside, we're, we are interacting with the environment, uh, particularly in an urban setting, uh, which I think is very important. Uh, especially for children to realize that nature is everywhere, the environment is everywhere, is something that uh, no matter where you are, uh, whether you're inner city or out in the country, um, we all rely on the same uh, environment. And, and personally also, as a job choice, I really enjoy being outdoors. I really dislike going to a gym and working out and uh, manual labor is a great way to stay outside and uh, get exercise and stay healthy and um, I love just being outside and hearing all the sounds. Even here I can hear the highway in the background but I can also hear about three or four different bird songs right now. Uh, pretty soon we'll be uh, hearing and seeing the buzzing of bees and uh, different pollinators and butterflies. Uh, so just being a part of that seasonal change uh, from day to day, uh, personally, it's just I think it's good for the soul, and, and I love to be able to share that uh, with our youth. All right, we're right in the midst of spring planting, so some of our beds are planted and others are in transition, but we'll take a walk through. Um, over here, we have some leeks in the middle. Along the outer edge is actually volunteer garlic from last year, so we're actually going to pull that out and we're going to seed, uh, sow some mustard greens. Um, we have green onions and garlic over here and these beds are waiting to be sown I believe with cucumbers and then over here we have more leeks and again we're going to sow the perimeter uh, I can't exactly remember what is on our crop plan uh, but it is uh, coming soon uh, to the right uh, we have collard greens and in the middle we're going to have arugula right in the middle of the H and then also here you see these are sensory mounds so all of our teaching farm sites have these uh, for children to explore the five senses and we have here is sound and we have nigella planted so when they form their seed pods they and dry out they rattle um, and over here is touch, so we have sensitive plant that will grow in the summer, or touch me not, when you, when you touch it, the leaves close up. Um, it's an absolute favorite of the children, as well as the lamb's ear, of course, which is soft and fuzzy. Um, over here to our left, uh, we just uh, prepped this bed 
Uh, we applied uh, potash and feather mill, and we're about to transplant tomatoes. And over here, we just last week transplanted kale. And then you see it in the middle again, we have leeks. And our transplants, we actually grow at Woodlawn High School. We have a greenhouse there uh, where we sow all of our all of our little seedlings uh, for transplant, not only to our school sites, but also transplants that we give away to other community gardens all throughout Birmingham uh, to help help their projects as well. And over here, we're just we're getting ready to transplant these uh, hot peppers and shishito peppers. And this is our sensory mound for sight, so we have really colorful flowers. Again, more kale over here. And then these beds covered in the black plastic, uh, we're, we have those to solarize the beds to increase the soil temperature so we can sow carrots here uh, momentarily. And this is our taste mound, our, our last sense. Uh, so we have sorrel, chives, and mint primarily planted here. We, we just recently threw in some marigolds that were donated to us, uh, so we threw those in. And then to my left here, we're getting ready to transplant these sweet peppers. And then our kale has started to bolt, so shortly we'll be turning this bed over and I believe planting squash, if I remember correctly. Over here through the weeds we have, when the students are here, we will plant the perimeter of this with sunflowers, uh, both uh, single branching tall sunflowers as well as short branching sunflowers. We'll then interplant that with morning glory, which of course is a vine that will grow up the sunflowers and will run string across the sunflowers to form a roof with the with the morning glory so this will turn into a sunflower house a nice little getaway especially for our pre-k and kindergartners they really like smaller spaces and it's just a magical little area for them to be in and we have a few fruit, fruit trees uh, we have more mint and sorrel sorrel is sorrel is one of the children's favorites because it's sour um, and they just they'll come over here throughout the day to eat munch on those leaves and here we just have a mound of uh, just decorative flowers, some cutting flowers from uh, Ami, and uh, we have some nigella in here as well. And up top, that is a uh, purple martin house. Purple martins are a threatened species of migratory birds. They live uh, most of their months in South America, and then in the winter and spring, they make their way this way uh, to breed, and they ret will actually return to the same home year after year um, and so this is our attempt to attract them we haven't attracted them yet uh, this uh, was from a grant from Alabama Audubon and uh, we are still waiting for them to arrive uh, we have seen them in the area so we know they live here uh, we're just hoping their populations grow to the point of this becoming a, a welcoming home for them all of our sites have compost of course we got not only is it healthy for our, our plants, but it's a great teaching tool for the students to learn about decomposition and how soil is made. And I forget what's going in here. Okra. Okra. Yes, we just, we just prepared this one, so we're going to transplant okra today. Um, two varieties, Carmen Splendor and Clemson. Fine. So, two varieties. We have a little herb, herb mound. This is our kitchen mound, so thyme, oregano, rosemary, we even have some tarragon that will come back soon, lemon balm, lavender, again sorrel, can't have enough sorrel, never can. And more collard greens. And we're also going to transplant some zinnias in here for cut flowers and also just for the, for the color. We'll do that today. This is our medicinal mound, so the plants in this bed all have a medicinal um, characteristic, uh, from mullein to mugwort, yarrow, even rose hips and feverfew. And we'll have some echinacea that will come back here shortly. 
And this is our strawberry bed. So we have lots of blooms already, so we should have an early, early crop of strawberries, assuming we don't have another freeze. And up above us, muscadines, which is another student favorite. It welcomes them back to school every year in August. They're always ready, ready to be picked when school resumes. And um, when students come to help out on the farms, we um, always like to thank them, and muscadines are a great way to thank them. Um, and sometimes we don't have any projects for them to do, so they'll, they'll do some projects around the school grounds, such as picking up trash, um, and we'll provide them with the muscadines as a little treat. Um, and all of our K-8 sites, including Woodlawn High School, has a water feature, uh, a pond. And so in this case, we have rat, uh, brim and bass in here. Some of our other sites will have koi, catfish, and, and so forth. So at a few of our teaching farms, we have worm bins. Uh, similar to the compost, this is a great way to teach about uh, decomposition. Um, and so in here, we have red wigglers. And we can see if we can, yep, there they are, very healthy. They mostly get a, a good diet of my leftover apple cores from lunch. Um, and the kids love it because, you know, worms are just so curious and yet so gross at the same time. And so elementary school students just love to peek in here and hold worms uh, whenever they can. Whenever they visit, and we have raccoons, so we keep it covered and weighted down. And here are our cisterns. All of our sites will have, have these rain catchment cisterns, and like I mentioned, we use these uh, primarily for hand watering, uh, but also as an educational tool, of course, about um, not only uh, the water cycle, but also engineering, uh, because there are certain things you have to do to, to shape, to, to angle the uh, the catchment systems and and to get the water into uh, the cistern and this cistern actually fills from the bottom up uh, so nice little engineering lessons uh, go into that uh, this is one of our teaching spaces um, a little more of a traditional setting where they're uh, kind of facing the whiteboard often we will start here uh, on a lesson to sort of lay out the framework of what we're learning and then from here you know after about 10 or 15 minutes here we'll then move into the farm space uh, to do more of a hands-on uh, experience and we have over here our wash station which is also a favorite spot of students because they get like to get wet uh, but we utilize a, a three sink system here, uh, have a staging area, and we basically work our way towards uh, the, the covered area here where the produce is weighed and bagged and then recorded uh, before being distributed uh, wherever that may be. So it being springtime, uh, we're doing a lot of transplanting in the beds. Today we have tomatoes, sweet and hot peppers, and some okra, and we also have some flowers. Um, the first step in transplanting is to give them a, a drench in fish fertilizer and CECOM, which gives them this, a boost of nitrogen and helps with transplant shock once we put them in the soil. This is a specialty pepper uh, called Mellow Star. It's a type of shishito pepper, which is a frying pepper. And we're going to be putting them in this bed here. Uh, we're gonna be doing two rows and then um, a foot 12 inches spacing. So first step, after our drench, we have a ruler here, which we use at all of our sites. Um, it's just good to keep a straight line and make sure that we're getting even spacing between all of the plants. Uh, so first step, we'll place them at foot intervals. 
and usually there's one person um, plopping them out and another person will come behind uh, use the trowel and transplant them into the ground. Yeah some plants are particularly solanums like peppers and tomatoes um, they have what are called advantageous roots so the, the deeper you plant the more roots will form out of those stems. And the measuring stick of course is always good for as a learning experience for the children as well. They can practice their math skills. You see Alan is planting them pretty deep so that the um, stem is deep into the soil. Um, you don't want too much in, you know for the wind in case it can blow around and snap the stem. Um, it also helps with root development and just making sure you get all of the soil medium that it's been growing in far beneath the uh, surface of the soil in the bed. All right, so we're going to, on this side of the bed, we got some hot peppers to plant. We have habaneros and jalapenos. Being in elementary school, this is, this is all we're gonna grow. Um, mm -hmm. Younger children just don't quite handle the heat, uh, quite like maybe our high school or middle school students would, so uh, we're just gonna do a few of these. I'll have to split some of these up. They did, had really good germination. So we get our seeds uh, primarily from Johnny's uh, online, uh, but we also do Southern Seed Exchange and Baker Creek Farms. Uh, those have just been really reliable seed providers. Um, and then, like I said before, we sow all these in our greenhouse at the high school. So often we will have an after school program called Farm Club. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty small group of students that come out um, weekly. Uh, to do I guess what you would imagine farm club would be. They prepare the soil, they prep, they sow, they transplant, they harvest, they wash. Um, so they do all all these processes that we're doing today um, but in a, in a more structured learning environment. And another after-school program we have is market club where the students um, similar to farm club um, small group after school however it's rather than doing a lot of the growing and harvesting they actually will take the the produce harvested by farm club and will set up a little table uh, in front of the school during um, pickup at the end of, at the end of school uh, when the parents come to pick up their kids and uh, they will sell the produce to families and a lot of folks here in Avondale will actually come from the community neighboring, uh, some of our neighbors will come and they'll purchase uh, produce from the students. And, you know, we sell the produce and in and, and, and the markets, you know, if most things are only a dollar or two dollars um, because the primary goal is to teach them to, um, you know, interact with people on a customer service level uh, to doing their quick math, uh, producing change, uh, but also be able to describe the food that they're selling, what it tastes like, um, what they, how it can be prepared, and things like that. So really, salesmanship, customer service, um, marketing, because uh, they have to set up the table in, a, in a, an attractive manner. Um, so um, a very, very, um, very fun club um, to, to, to watch. So here we have uh, we use this drip line here and we can um, not only turn off individual lines as they are not needed, uh, but we, each bed also has, where is, oh there it is, <laughs> we also have the ability to turn each bed off or on, which is really great um, in the summer when we have certain vegetables that just need a lot of water and others like peppers and tomatoes that don't need the water. We can control um, each individual line bed and larger bed uh, throughout. We also out on the back of the shed we have a rain cistern and we'll primarily use that with students to do hand watering so we'll fill, fill up some five gallon buckets and they'll dip watering cans and they'll help uh, 
water throughout the farm with farm space with that. So for example, our crop plan for this spring planting and even summer, we were working on that um, as we were planting for fall and winter. Uh, so we stay well ahead of the curve. And that was that has proved especially beneficial during the pandemic because gardening has become so popular that finding seeds has become difficult. So with our with our advanced planning, we were able to stay ahead of that and uh, for the most part get the seeds that we needed for for our planning processes. That would be my my advice. Sarah Bell's a little more experienced than I am, so. It's... Um. Well, I would, all, I would consider myself a beginning farmer as well. Planning is a really big component of farming. You're always looking a season ahead. Um, I would suggest doing the work of becoming a farm crew member of a farm you really admire um, or look up to if you're able to do that. Um, you can get a lot of experience uh, from other farmers and even just working a couple seasons or a year. I think there's a lot of farmers that want to help other farmers. I would add the, the extension. The extension is a great yeah. resource. Yeah. Uh, I tell all of our graduate apprentices as they uh, work through our program and leave our program if they want to start their own farms that the extension service is probably one of the better resources that we, we have available. Um, we're already paying for it through taxes, and so might as well take advantage of the services that are provided, the professional knowledge of, of horticulturists, horticulturist and, and whatnot. Um, that has, you know, they've seen it all, basically. They visit so many different farms, they've seen, so they stay on top of all the different diseases and yeah. issues we face, especially in the South. Um, so definitely reach out to get to know your extension agent. Yes. Organization wide, we do utilize the Farming Basics app. Um, I love it because it's uh, it, all the color photos of pests and diseases uh, specific to certain crops uh, is very helpful. Uh, it's also very helpful to, for students uh, to be able to show that, show different things to them because we can't always see, you know, the the cut worms and whatnot they're not always on the plants for us to show but to be able to show them an image um, and the damage they cause is, is really really beneficial um, I'm not familiar with anything else we might use um, we use the soil testing lab a lot um, we send all of our soil samples to Auburn um, that is really helpful especially for a new farmer if you're on land that has never been farmed or is new to you to um, get a soil test and be able to use that service um, that that can help you a lot with um, just which amendments to put into your soil and how to treat your soil to um, help its productivity over the years we also have not we've attended a lot of the lunch and learns at the botanical gardens and i know extension agents have been uh a lot of the speakers for those programs and that's been really beneficial especially for our, our younger apprentices mm. to market our our work um we use we utilize a lot of social media uh instagram primarily um we have a twitter account a facebook account uh, our website um, is always meticulously updated uh, there's a blog on there as well and uh, with links to our YouTube channel which has a lot of educational content uh, particularly uh, throughout the pandemic that we produced uh, to be able to reach reach students and the, the larger community uh, as well um, and that's really a great a great way to get a taste of, uh, of what we do in schools uh, because well of course we grow food um, and students learn how to grow food. We actually do more of, we actually teach more math and science and things like that by growing food. So for example, um, when, we plant, when we put the plants in the ground, we talk about plant needs, anywhere from you know soil, water, air, um, sunshine, and the parts of the plant, and then we get in, go deeper and talk about photosynthesis and the water cycle. Uh, so it's really we really get in depth. Uh, we just use growing food as a as a hands-on tool 
uh, to teach standards-based uh, lessons that they're already learning, but now they, they go beyond the book uh, by coming out to the teaching farms.